know that in first Thessalonians it tells us to thank God and everything for this is the will of God and concerning us. He didn't say we want to thank him, we need to thank him. Thank
again for another opportunity to share the blessings of your word with your children this morning. As your sons and daughters, Father, we pray that your spirit that dwelleth in us will empower us to not only speak your word, but to hear your word. God, we pray and declare that all activities of the enemy shall cease now. That your word shall go forth shall accomplish what you have sent it to accomplish. Today, God, we declare that dreams will be ignited. Hearts and souls will be set on fire. Happiness and joy restored. Healing will take place. Miracles will be seen and witnessed. In Jesus' name. Come on, clap your hands on the While you're standing, please open up your Bibles to Galatians chapter 3. We're still talking about your Bill of Rights. We know that this month has been known to celebrate our history as black people. We thank God for all of our ancestors before us that have paved the way, have struggled, fought for our civil rights. Many of them lost their lives. They were taken in slavery, sold, and everything that we can imagine. That every year, our history would never let us forget it. But the only thing that bothers me is not hearing and being reminded of our history every year. But what bothers me, if we don't be careful how we are writing our history for our children's children to have something to hold on to. We can always look back at Dr. Martin Luther King and all of those that marched with him and fought with him, Rosa Parks, Maya Angelou, all of these great people that was before us. But when we look at what they have done in history, if all we can reflect back to is what they've done, that is an indication that we're stuck in time. And we don't realize the importance that history writes itself every second of our life. And I'll tell you how simple it is when we look back and remember and tell stories of our grandparents and our great-grandmother. When you're troubled in spirit, you always look back and remember something that they said. So we have to keep our history to going as a people. So today we still want to talk about knowing your Bill of Rights. Because if you don't know your rights, you will be stuck in a history that was devastating to us all. And because of them, we all have been granted the opportunity to add to the great history that our forefathers and those that marched and fought before us have not done it in vain. But the first thing I would love to see in our culture of a black people and I hope that this video is shared everywhere that the word will get out. Let's quit killing one another and start appreciating each other. We all may be different, different in ages, different in skin tone, different in economical and educational background, different in our height, different 
in our weight, but we are a people, a nation of God's people. And imagine what would happen if we would come together as a people and become one, then we would no longer be conquered by the enemy because our power lies within our unity. And I want to encourage every black person, start supporting black businesses. Start supporting your black businesses. I know it may be cheaper at the Korean store next door, but you got to start supporting where the dollars are going back into our community, supporting our children and what we stand for. Amen? Amen. Galatians chapter 3, I'm going to look at verse 13 and 14, won't hold you long. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. The blessings of Abraham, everybody shout the blessings of Abraham, Amen. might come unto Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. Now, in Galatians, if you go back and read it from verse 1, and it starts in verse 2, uh, that Paul said, This only would I learn of you, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. In other words, you, we receive the spirit by the hearing of faith and not by the works of the law. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? We have to understand, people, that none of us are perfect in our flesh. But yet we misjudge everyone as though they should be. But we're not perfect in the flesh. He therefore that ministered in verse 5 to you, the spirit, and worketh miracles among you, do it he uh, it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Again, he asked that question, and it's by the hearing of faith. The healing and the working of miracles is not by the law, but it's by the hearing of our faith. Faith is information that God gave us to act upon. When we hear the voice of God, and then we begin to do what the voice of God tells us to do by his spirit that is in us, then what we're doing, we're acting upon our faith. Told Abraham, Abraham, come here, I want you to leave out from among your kindred. And I want you to go. Abraham never questioned God, but Abraham began to walk. Abraham never complained, but Abraham obeyed. Sometimes people, God calls us to do things that we don't understand. And he may call you to do something that you do not like or that is displeasing to you. But I would advise you, it would behoove you if you want to see the mighty hand of God and the blessings of God flowing through your life and your family life is called obedience. For Samuel said in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and 22, he tells us that it is more better to obey than to sacrifice. When we disobey God, we sacrifice God's blessings in our life. God does not reward disobedience, but God rewards obedience. So we have to understand is that God wants us to walk by faith. The Bible says that, and the just shall live by faith. Faith is not what you believe, faith is acting upon what you believe. And when you act upon what you believe, then God always have a reward because first of all, God's faith will lead you to what your desires are. The Bible declares that God will give us the desires of our heart. So you have to understand, if God said that he would give us the desires of our heart, I want you to understand, know your bill of rights. And whatever your heart desire, you don't think about the steps that it's going to take to get to what you desire. So it's called a period of transformation that when God <clears throat> gives you information, by your faith, he gives that to you for you to act upon. 
And once you begin to act up on it, you begin to move, you begin to walk, then you'll start experiencing the blessings of God. Now, you may not experience it right away, but God will take you to where he wants you to be. See, Moses, not, uh, Abraham did not understand, but as he began to walk, he, he didn't experience things just happening right away. But after he got so far, God said, wherever your feet has treaded, tread it, I'm giving it to you. It's yours. So you have to know that you don't need to be a part of no trickery or no games. God is operating according to your obedience to his word. So Paul says that we receive the spirit by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham in verse 6 believed God. God gave him faith. The Bible says that God has given every man a measure of faith. The size of a mustard seed. What is that? Instructions. Information. So God gave that to Abraham even as Abraham believed God and it was a counter to him for righteousness. So God gave it to him and Abraham had to believe it. So it makes no difference if God gives you a word. If you don't believe it, then the word cannot be effective in your life. See, it takes you to believe what God said. If you believe it and God said it, you have to be ready to start doing what God say do. Somebody shout, then it will come to pass. See, I, I, can't, I can't pray that up on you, but you can make it happen if you obey God. You have to do something. Touch somebody and tell you have to do something. See, we take literally when the Bible say wait on the Lord, we sit and we wait and we do nothing. But it does not mean that you sit and do some, nothing. It means you need to be about God's business. And everything is a process. But if you don't know your rights, then the enemy will rob you of everything that God promised you of. The Bible say only a fool would say in his heart, there is no God. And with all of this misconception that is going around us, where the enemy is saying that this is a, just a white man's religion and this and all of that, but yet even the white men, the scientists, and all of them are not white. They come in every color, from every nation. They too once opposed that there were no God. But now because of what they have discovered, now they agree that there is a God. They first were saying there's a holy power, but now they're saying God does exist. And let me help you out. If you're still caught in between, let me help you out. I'd rather go along with believing that there is a God, taking my chance that if life ends and there is no God, at least I have not wasted nothing, rather than not believing that there is a God. And when life ends, I discovered that there is a God, now I'm in trouble. So we have to understand our bill of rights. So Paul says in verse seven, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. The same are the children of Abraham. They that's of faith. Abraham, what do you mean by they that's of faith of Abraham? If you are obedient to the word. The Bible says don't just be a hearer, but be a doer. You have to be able to do it. And when you be, when you are able to do what you hear, it simply means you are exercising your rights to your faith. You're believing. And people only going to act upon what they believe. If I say, if I say, Sister Johnson, come and, and raise up this speaker and there you're going to find a million dollars, she's going to have to make up her mind, is this fiction or is it true? Now, technically, by hearing the word, she'll say, well, Bishop said I'm going to raise up the speaker, there's a million dollars. She may raise up the speaker and look and find no money and say, that's not, it's, it's not right. Well, you see, it's only because you acted upon something that you really desire, that you really want. But you have to understand when God says something. See, it's different when God says something and man says something. Now, if God say go and seek and find, then you'll find it. 
See? I would, you know, uh, how do you react to things? I was driving the other day, coming from the dentist's office, and I was born under 99. All I saw, I didn't know how much it was, I know it was money, because I'm always seeking. The Bible says, seeking you shall find. And when I saw it and it blew into the car, I couldn't stop. My, my first reaction was to hit brakes. But then that would have been a chain of bad reaction. So I continued. And I was talking to my wife and I said, some money just blew. I said, you know, I should go back. I, said, you know, I, was, I was in the process of saying I could, couldn't know. What if somebody find it? So finally I said, let me just turn around. And I turned around, I said, maybe some more, where that come from? And I looped around, and I, but, but by the time I got up there, I didn't have to U-turn, it blowed on the right side. So I stopped and put my emergency brakes on, I said, there it is, there's a dollar. Picked it up. And I looked around, and I said, thank you, Jesus, there's a dollar. That's all I can tell y'all about that dollar. That's all I'm going to tell y'all about that dollar. So I put the dollar in the truck. Well, I might as well, I got out there. Now, I might as well, so John said, you might as well go and tell it. I start thinking like some of y'all. I say, well, that's my good luck dollar. I would play lottery with that dollar. That may be my dollar from the Lord to win the lottery. <laughs> but I didn't play the lottery. I still got it in my truck. But let me tell y'all what happened. I said, I ought to take that dollar, put my four more with it, and play pick three, four, four, four. Then I started saying, now, nah, I'm not gonna do that, I'll just put it in there. All right. Sitting there watching my TV, What went across the screen for the evening draw? Four, four, four. I said, oh, Jesus. I'd have missed it. So let me, let me share something with you. That would have been $2,500. So in the scripture in verse 8, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. You have to know your bill of rights. In thee all nations shall be blessed. Not just because you are a people of a nation, but remember what the earlier scripture says, those who obey the word of God, you have to do something. So then they which be of Abraham are blessed with faithful Abraham. Notice the scripture call them faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curses everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Somebody shout, he, made, he became a curse for me. So Christ became, took our place as being cursed. And therefore, we have the place of being blessed. Somebody ought to shout, thank you, Lord, I'm blessed. Look what verse 14, that the blessings of Abraham might come, might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. This is what he was talking about. Through Jesus Christ, because the Bible says all of our heavenly blessings is in Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And that's the Holy Spirit that Jesus talked about when he said, If I don't leave, then the Father cannot send the Spirit. 
See, we want all the materialistic things of life, but we don't want the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God that leads us and guides us, people. So he said, Brother, when I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulled or added thereto. Can no one stop it? Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said, Not and to seeds as of many, but as to one. Talking about one, that was Jesus. He didn't say seeds with an S, but he said seed. So now that Jesus have rendered it, he says, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. So it was already promised about the seed, Jesus Christ. Now, because of Jesus Christ, now we are inheritors of everything. We are heirs in inheritance. We cannot have it without him. We have it in and through him. This is why Jesus said, anything that you ask the Father, you have to ask in my name. You cannot go to the Father except through him. So we have access to our Father through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the seed of Abraham. And the promise was made when he said seed. So don't mistakenly think that it means seeds that we just automatically get it. No, because of Abraham's faith and his belief and trust in God, God blessed the promise through Jesus Christ. And now that we accept Christ as our Savior, we are heirs and joint heirs to the promise of God. We are God's children. And because we are God's children and we have this heir, any and everything that we say according to his purpose and his will, it has to happen. This is what Jesus was demonstrating when he cursed the fig tree and he told them, if you have the faith of the size of the mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain. Somebody please shout at me this morning, I am God's child. I am God's child. And see, when you speak his word, even nature has to bow, not to you, but the spirit of God that's in you. That's why the Bible say we walk by faith. We, what do you mean we walk by faith? We walk by the instructions that God has given us and not by sight. Because what you may see may be greater than what you can accomplish in your natural state. But in your spiritual state is where the supernatural comes. And you can speak to that mountain and the mountain have to be moved. So why are you still saying, Lord, go to the hospital and heal the sick? When he said, you have that power that I have given you in me that you speak to the sick. And the sick shall be healed. You lay hands on the sick and they should be healed and their sins shall be forgiven. We have this authority in Christ. You just have to know your bill of rights. If you don't know who you are then yourself along with the enemy that don't want you to discover who you are. Since it's Black History Month, why do you think the enemy never wanted black people to learn how to read? It's because when you read, it brings knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. So that's why they said different ones created the light bulb and this one created this, this. And then when you begin, now that we understand, guess what? It was our own people. Knowledge is power. It's power. And God said in Jeremiah 3 and 15, I give you pastors that they may feed you with knowledge and understanding. Because God wants us to know and understand what we know and know what you understand. Because it's power. It is not, people were not just born millionaires. It was the knowledge of something. And we have given away our rights so many times. 
I've seen restaurants that was put together by black people and they sold the businesses and the businesses are striving. You have to know who you are. Don't waste your mind with negativity. Be creative. This world have a need and point to yourself and say this world need me. But don't think that it is your beauty, it is your shape, it is your muscular uh, 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 self. It, that's not what the word need. They need that knowledge that you have. Let's talk about it for a minute. I don't have long. The movie just came out that we watched. Not Black Panther. That's fictional. But the movie came out, what was it called? Hidden Figures. And here there's all of these brilliant black women. Smart. Now my auntie said that she came up in that era where during that time, and my auntie loved math, she, she's a math genius. She said that it was, it was non-negotiable that black young girls in that era had to learn calculus, trigonometry, geometry, and all of that. And they took them and they hid them, and all they let you see is the man that made it to the moon. But then the movie came out to show you it was these hidden figures because they couldn't have done it without these black women. So to my black sisters, you're more than just long hair and a beautiful body and your sex appeal. That's nothing. That is the lowest thing of the earth. The greatest thing that you have is between your ears. Because you were created to retain information. They were powerful. That's how they made it there. So you have to know who you are. You have to know your worth. So watch this, let, let, me, let me go ahead and wrap this up. Because we need to know our rights if we don't know our rights. We're not gonna make it. The world is only frightened of you and we're wondering why the world hate us. You can only withhold knowledge for so long. And the world is afraid that when you wake up and find out who you really are, the power that you possess, that's what the world is afraid of. You have no limits, you have to know your Bill of Rights. So the curse, <coughs> was upon us designed to keep us in poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. We were prisoners destined for eternal devastation. The Redeemer Christ broke the power of this being made a curse for us. And the law was clear, curse is everyone that hanging on the tree. Everything that was designed to keep you captive, every instrument that was designed for you to hang on was destroyed that day on the cross. Tiffany, I have to tell you this, is that your, your watch this here, the Holy Spirit is speaking. Your line of make, you, you're busy doing makeup, making everybody look pretty. That's not where your wealth is. That's just keeping you maintained. God say, think about the first lady. Go back and search her history. Who, who was the creator of makeup? It's time for you to put more energy into your line of makeup. Yes, yes. See, are, are you feeling, are you, are you feeling, you listen to the spirit? You making them look pretty with the products, but guess what happened when you start producing your products? People would no longer worry about how well you make them look because they know it's the product. Yeah. 
It's in the product. Now that's your word from the spirit. I don't know where you at, what you've been doing, but the spirit of God told me to speak that to you now to tell you, you got to go beyond just doing classes and doing makeup. You got to put full throttle into your makeup line. And when you start this time, it has to be no end. You have to get your product out there. Other than that, it's just a product sitting in you that's not valuing you anything, not bringing you anything. Your greatest wealth is in your product. Develop it, put it out there on the market. And it's been done already. What's her name, the lady who came up with the first makeup? No, nah, it wasn't Mary Kay. Y'all gotta go further than Mary Kay. No, nah, that has got to go away. I, I forgot her name. Madam C. D. Walker did the hair, but I, I thought it's another one that did makeup line also. So you have to do, who, uh, who, call out some names, whatever. You just have to do it. So you have to understand. So as he broke the curse by being made a curse, he released the blessings of Abraham on all the Gentiles. That's why I had to go through Christ to break the curse that the blessings would be released. Everybody shout, it's released on me. So what happened? Gateways were opened that day for all who believed to march into an inheritance. The blessings now rest on you, your children, and all of us who are children of God. Never let deception, everybody shout, don't let deception, or the deceiver hoodwink you out of what belongs to you through his lies. When he tell you you can't do it, that's a lie. I don't care if it's cost millions. I, I know the Spirit of God is still working, Tiffany, working on you. Remember, there have been times doors have been opened for you. You've been figuring out how to do the product and people have been reaching out to do it. You have to do it. You have to, you have to do it. You have to do it. If you don't do it, you can't fault nobody for your failure but you. It's success there. God said that's your avenue. That's your door. And that's what we have to understand. When God gives you a door, that's your door. Wow, I felt that on the anointing. That's your door. You have to go through that door. If you've been failing, it's because you're trying to go through a door following somebody else with their desires. You have to go through your door. And guess what? Most of the time we do that because we don't like the door that God gave us to go through. I don't want to do this. I don't have to do this. I want to do this. Well, the Bible says many are the plans of a man, but it is God's purpose that's going to take place. So you have to be ready. You have to be ready. You have to be ready. Amen? So yeah, everybody shall stand in faith. So you have to walk in fullness of the Holy Spirit through faith. You have to walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit. Why? Because you can't walk in the Spirit looking through your natural eye. Now, naturally, you're going to see natural things, but you have to say within yourself, God, lead me which way you want me to go. The Spirit of God will speak to you. The Spirit of God will direct you. The Spirit of God will lead you. And when he lead you, he may lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. But he said, do not fear. Why? It's because God leads us through what? The green valleys. By the still waters. So you have to know who God is. Know your rights is that every avenue to your blessing is not down the street of ease. You may have to go through some things. You may have to endure some things. Look at Israel. They endured suffering. They endured heartaches and everything. But they held on to the promise of God, of what God said he was going to do. If God promised you something, clap your hands and shout, thank you, Jesus. Some of you women are waiting to be married. It's going to happen. You may be saying, where's my husband? God may be letting them go through hell and high water, broken heart by every woman he come in contact with. Why? Because if he don't know what it is to be broken hearted and deceived by this woman, then he won't recognize and appreciate the love that you can give him. So he have to go through it in order when he get to it, he'll know what God has done. That's the same thing for men too that may be looking for a wife. She may be in deceived and everything else but God is just letting her be prepared so that when you find her she will appreciate you somebody ought to shout glory, glory. so as we do the Holy Spirit the power of God will cause you to be a witness of miracles without number every family generation marriage business and whatever nature of curse is broken no curse everybody shout no curse can stop, me. can stop me. No devil, no devil. Can, stop me. 
can rule over me because I'm fully redeemed through Christ Jesus. And you have to know who you are. You are a power source. You are a power to be reckoned with. All you have to do is keep believing God, keep trusting God, keep loving God, keep obeying God's word. And when you keep doing that, God will lead you to where you need to be. Somebody ought to shout, it ain't over with yet. Tell your neighbor, don't count me out yet. Right now, I'm just going through because I'm knowing my rights. I'm reading through all of this. When I understand my rights, then my rights will set me free. Where are my rights at? It's in the word of God. And whom the Son set free shall be what? Free indeed. Somebody ought to shout, I'm getting ready to be set free. I'm not going to be bundled in poverty no more, sickness no more, health no more. Why? I'm going to step into my wealthy place. I'm going to declare God's word that I'm blessed. My family is blessed. I'm healed. My family is healed. My family is delivered. Why? It's because I know that when I went to sleep last night, I was blessed. When I woke up, I was blessed. Why? It's because I am the child of God and the redeemer of the Lord. My Savior, Jesus Christ, have redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. I'm blessed. Look at somebody. Can you see the blessings on me? Shake hands with somebody and say, this is what it feels like. Shake your hands with a blessing. You say I'm broke, but I say I'm blessed. You say I'm ugly, but I say I'm blessed. You say I'm struggling, but I say I'm blessed. Why? Because Romans 8 and 28 say, and all things shall work together. So baby, even in my struggles, I'm blessed. Why? My struggles is working for me. How are they working for me? My struggles is getting my set place ready for me. So if I walk in my struggles, when I get to my blessed place, I can look back and say, if it had not been for the Lord, oh my, won't he lead you through it? Won't he bring you through hell? Want it bring you through the valley? Want it bring you over the highest mountain? Somebody ought to shout, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, I hope you're excited about Jesus. Because you, you got to tell somebody, it ain't over for me yet. It's just beginning. What you see now is just a beginning of what God is going to do. God is just waiting on you to make up your mind what you're going to believe and what you're going to obey. And that's what leads you to the blessings of God. Touch three people and say, I'm blessed. And I'm wonderfully blessed. Now lift your voice, stand to your feet, clap your hands, and tell the Lord, thank you for my blessing. Come on, thank you for my healing. Thank you for my deliverance. Oh, I got, I, wait, I got one more to release. Oh, uh, you know something, uh, let, me, well, let, me, let me be, let me be obedient. Sister, God say, what you need to be preparing for is not principalship. That's just an avenue. You need to be preparing for what your heart desires. And that's superintendentship. You need to start getting ready for that part of it. That's what you need to do. I'll tell you, that there's a person, I'm not going to call no name, but there's a person that I, 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 I said that to a while back. They was talking about principalship. And they got moved out of the classroom. And now they're in the principalship. So God will do it. Will you be obedient and faithful to God? God will do it. It's because God gets the glory out of every and anything that we do. Because you fail, life is not over. Failures are just stepping stones in life. Failures help you to figure out your next step or your next move. That's why James said, brother, encountered all joy you fall into such diverse temptation. 